Alibaba, stock investors seem either to love it or hate it. On one side of the argument, you have people that will tell you Chinese businesses as a whole are simply uninvestable due to the major geopolitical risks. Yet on the other side of the equation, you will find people that say if you look at the actual underlying business, you'll find a massive company that produces roughly double the operating income of retail giant Costco, yet trades at a 15% lower price. Alibaba stock remains down about 60% from its highs back in late 2020 and at this point the business is starting to string together quite a few increasingly profitable quarters. And as we'll discuss in this video, now that China is largely through a lot of their harsh COVID restrictions, the business of Alibaba is actually returning to growth. This video is going to be a comprehensive overview of Alibaba's latest earnings for the three months ended June 30th. In the video, we'll go through some of the opening remarks from high-level management at Alibaba. We'll talk through Alibaba's financial results, their revenue, earnings, free cash flow, share repurchases, their balance sheet health, and we'll also look at some of their individual segment results, how their Chinese commerce business is performing versus their cloud business and international commerce and logistics and so on. And Alibaba each quarter also hosts about an hour and a half long conference call, which is a good chance for analysts and investors to ask management some questions about how Alibaba is tracking. So towards the end of the video, I'll also share some highlights from that management Q&A session. So be sure to sit back, relax, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But just before we get into that, I would like to welcome a brand new sponsor to the channel, Seeking Alpha. Founded in 2004, Seeking Alpha has become one of the world's best known platforms for stock analysis. Interested in digging deeper into a company you like? Use Seeking Alpha to access up to 10 years of company financial data, as well as news, earnings releases and transcripts, and detailed write-ups on the company from other investors and analysts. Once your initial research is complete, you can even use Seeking Alpha to set custom price alerts, so that you never miss an opportunity to buy a stock you like at a price you like. Use the first link in the description, seekingalpha.me forward slash investing with Tom to access a free 14 day trial of Seeking Alpha Premium. It's rare that I partner with new companies here on the channel and I'm very pleased to be able to do so with Seeking Alpha. But with all that said, let's get right back to the video. Now just for a bit of context on the quarterly results here from Alibaba, uh, this is actually the first full quarter we're going to have uh, kind of past the harsh COVID restrictions and lockdowns and so on in China. Uh, we had sort of work and life seem to normalize in China back in uh, early February and this quarter will give us data from the 1st of April to the end of June. So a uh, kind of first full quarter out of uh, some of those harsher COVID restrictions and as you'll see in some of the numbers here, there's sort of a increasing return to uh, consumption in China, which is very beneficial for uh, the business of Alibaba, which sells a very wide range of goods. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that for the past several quarters now at Alibaba, the theme has really been very modest uh, to almost flat revenue, very little growth on the revenue front, but quite significant gains in profitability, mainly through reducing the losses uh, in many of Alibaba's loss-making businesses. So uh, in the last quarter, uh, revenue was up 2% year over year, whereas non-GAAP net income was up 30% year over year, and free cash flow was 32.3 billion RMB uh, versus a loss of uh, 15 billion RMB the same quarter of the prior year. And of course, one of the biggest news stories with Alibaba this year is that they have announced plans to uh, sort of restructure the business and split it into six different business units, uh, each of which can potentially seek their own external funding and uh, go on to have their own IPO and separate stock listing. We're yet to see one of those IPOs happen just yet, but investors are certainly keeping a very close eye on those developments as well. Okay, so before we get into the specific financial results, uh, let's go through some of the opening remarks and opening comments from senior management at Alibaba. Now, uh, typically this would be uh, done by Daniel Zhang, who's the uh, group CEO. This is actually his last quarterly conference call as group CEO, which I'll get to in a sec. And we would typically hear from Toby Zhu as well, who is the Alibaba chief financial officer. We did still hear from Toby Zhu, but a little bit different in the opening remarks this time around. We heard from uh, Daniel 
Daniel Zhang as usual, but we also heard from Trudy Dai, who is the CEO of the Taobao Tmall Group, which are two of Alibaba's monster China commerce businesses, uh, and that group represented close to 50% of Alibaba's revenue for the quarter. So, Daniel Zhang stunned off by saying the latest macro data indicates some uncertainties in the pace of post-COVID recovery, but as economic and consumer activities continue to resume, our business has demonstrated encouraging trends, economic resilience, confidence in the consumption recovery, and the significant potential from an integrated development of the digital economy and the real economy. The solid quarter also showed promising early results of our reorganization, which is beginning to unleash new energy across our businesses. We also further strengthen the company's capital management, moving ahead with our various programs to improve shareholder return under the leadership of the newly established Capital Management Committee. The capital market projects we announced last quarter are all underway, and we have also been continuing share repurchase activities in the market. And like I mentioned before, uh, this will be Daniel Zhang's last quarterly conference call as the Alibaba CEO. He is to be replaced by Joseph Tsai, who's one of the uh, kind of original 18, I think there was, Alibaba co-founders. Uh, so on that, Daniel Zhang said, lastly, this will be my 36th earnings call I have participated since our IPO in 2014, and the final one as chairman and CEO of Alibaba Group. This truly has been a privilege of a lifetime to lead the company by by CEO on our three strategies of consumption, cloud computing and globalization since 2015, and be a part of Alibaba's high growth period. And lastly, with some of the opening remarks, um, some comments here from Trudy Dai, the CEO of the Taobao and Tmall Group. Under our putting users first strategy, the Taobao app's user base has been put on a rapid track of growth. From April of this fiscal year, the average number of daily average users each month has grown by 6% or higher year over year. Last month, July, growth was over 7%. Based on third-party data, our daily active user leadership in the e-commerce space continues to widen. More and more users are choosing to use the Taobao app. Since we launched the value for money battle this fiscal year, we've seen a very clear trend of merchant growth on Taobao and Tmall. In the June quarter, we onboarded a large number of new merchants, a significant portion of whom started contributing to that value for money battle, winning over and converting users. Merchant confidence in doing business on our platform increased significantly and merchant spending also grew with an increase of over 20% in the daily average number of merchants paying for advertising. This all goes to show that more and more merchants are taking Taobao and Tmall as their first choice platform for stable operation of long-term businesses. And in terms of sort of the longer term uh, outlook and plans for Taobao and Tmall, uh, Trudy Dyer said we will build a more advanced, open and inclusive merchant ecosystem and attract more merchants to engage in the value for money battle so as to create a virtuous cycle on Taobao and Tmall of merchant ecosystem, revenue growth, stronger profitability, and that is precisely what our mission has always been. Okay, next up, let's look at some of the high-level financial results for the overall Alibaba group. We'll dive into some of the individual business units shortly, but in terms of the overall Alibaba group level, uh, for the quarter, consolidated revenue was up 14% year over year. Uh, that was phenomenal to see, uh, given the last several quarters have been like 0% revenue growth, 2% revenue growth. Um, to suddenly come out and have double digits is, I think, really a good sign for for, for Alibaba. Uh, so revenue was up 14%, income from operations was up 70%. Now I am essentially ignoring that uh, plus 70% number in uh, the income from operations line. Uh, Alibaba for the past few quarters it seems to be quite a common occurrence that they often have these quite large adjustments that can really skew uh, the earnings and income from operations figures. Uh, this quarter it was a stock-based compensation reversal which inflated that income from operations number quite significantly. Without that reversal of stock-based compensation uh, the growth in income from operations would have been quite significantly lower. So uh, I tend to focus on some of the uh, adjusted figures which kind of 
weed out a lot of that noise. Uh, so on that front, we had uh, adjusted EBITDA up 32% and non-GAAP diluted earnings per share up 48%. So even after weeding out uh, some of those uh, you know, unusual accounting items that came up through the quarter, massive improvements in profitability yet again for Alibaba. Next up, some of Alibaba's major costs as a percentage of revenue. Uh, you'll see here that some of these are significantly more meaningful than others. Uh, so we'll go through them kind of in that order. Now, uh, cost of revenue as a percentage of revenue was down from 62% to 61%. Uh, sales and marketing as a percentage of revenue was flat at 12%. Product development was down from 5% to 4%, and general and administrative was flat at 4%. So uh, not as dramatic uh, cost uh, declines as we have seen in some previous quarters, but every single item here was either down or flat. So we're continuing to see some of these cost savings, at least as a percentage of revenue, uh, flow through to improved margins for the business. Next up, let's look at some of the cash flow and sort of balance sheet health kind of figures here for Alibaba. Now, there's a lot of noise in some of the earnings numbers for Alibaba. There's various adjustments you've got to get your head around. Those can have a huge impact on uh, the sort of reported results and earnings and so on for the business, but it's really hard to fudge cash flow. <laughs> it's really hard to fudge how much cash your business generated in the quarter, how much cash you've got sitting in the bank and so on. So uh, I tend to pay quite a bit of attention to the cash flow numbers for Alibaba as a result. I then also pay a lot of attention to how that cash has been used, whether it's been used for acquisitions or to buy back shares or or, um, you know, whatever it is, I, I just want to have a good idea of kind of where that cash is eventually being allocated. And we also have to keep in mind that Alibaba is a somewhat seasonal business, so cash flows do fluctuate quite a bit quarter to quarter. But with all that said, uh, in terms of how some of the numbers came in, operating cash flow for the quarter was 45.3 billion RMB, or about 6.2 billion US dollars, up 34% year over year, so really good uh, increases on the operating cash flow front. Uh, free cash flow was 39.1 billion RMB or 5.4 billion US dollars, up 76% year over year. Now, free cash flow is simply the uh, cash produced from the operations of the business minus any capital expenditure that happened during the quarter. Uh, so the big jump up in free cash flow is sort of a combination of a better cash produced from Alibaba's business operations, but also lower capital expenditure than in the same quarter last year as well. Now, in terms of how that cash flow was used during the quarter, uh, of the $5.4 billion in uh, US dollars in free cash flow, uh, $3.1 billion was used to repurchase shares. Uh, they repurchased $35.6 million of their sort of ADS units. Uh, Alibaba do also issue shares. They have stock-based compensation. Uh, they issue shares to management and to employees. So they sort of repurchase shares, which brings the share count down, but at the same time they're issuing shares, those two forces are sort of fighting against one another. Uh, but nonetheless, the number of shares outstanding went down by about half a percent in the quarter by my maths, uh, and it's down about 3.8% versus the same time last year. And some of those share repurchase numbers, uh, they imply an $87 share price was sort of the average price that Alibaba um, paid for their stock buybacks. And after all of that, Alibaba continued to have 57.8 billion US dollars in net cash, which as of recording this video is almost a quarter of Alibaba's market cap, about 24% at the time of recording. Uh, and a further $16.3 billion is still remaining under the current uh, buyback authorization that runs through till March 2025. Okay, next up, let's jump into some of the individual segment results for Alibaba. Uh, this has changed a little bit this quarter with their uh, reorganization splitting into the six different business units. They've sort of reshuffled slightly which um, 
subsidiaries fit into which category and they've renamed some of the categories and things so it's a little different to what it's been like in previous quarterly updates uh, but nonetheless I'll try to give you some context on what actually brands or platforms we're talking about in each of these segments for Alibaba uh, and some of the segments are simply way larger and way more important than other segments so I'll try and give you a feel for um, how much uh, revenue and profitability each of these parts of Alibaba's business is contributing to the overall pie. First up, we have the Taobao and Tmall Group segment, uh, by far and away the largest and most important business unit at Alibaba. Uh, it represented 49% of revenue in the quarter, and uh, this never ceases to amaze me, but it was 108% of adjusted EBITDA in the quarter, which is sort of the profitability metric Alibaba tend to use most commonly. Uh, so it's producing half the revenue and more than all of the profit. So uh, in a lot of ways, it's sort of subsidizing some of Alibaba's loss-making businesses. Uh, and with the reorganization, it of course includes Taobao and Tmall, as the group name suggests. Uh, but it's also got in there Taobao Deals, Tao Tai Tai, and 1688. This segment used to be called the China Commerce segment, I believe, and it also used to include Fresh Shippo and Alibaba Health, but those two subsidiaries have been moved out of this category uh, for this quarter's reporting. But with all that said, uh, revenue for the Taobao and Tmall group in the quarter ending June 30th was up 14% versus the prior year. Adjusted EBITDA was up 9% and EBITDA margin, which I've calculated manually here, they used to report this for all the business units, but that's dropped off the slides for whatever reason, uh, decreased from 44% to 43%, but still a very high margin business, absolute beast, extremely profitable part of Alibaba. And to see it jump from having uh, next to no growth reported over the past few quarters to a 14% growth in revenue is a great sign for the health of Alibaba's business. Okay, next up we have the International Digital Commerce Group. Uh, that group represented 9% of revenue in the quarter and it's currently loss making, but it's getting less loss making and it's actually not too far off being profitable now. So uh, this includes Lazada, AliExpress, Trendio, and uh, Alibaba.com. And it's been one of the faster growing segments of Alibaba over the past few quarters. And this quarter did not disappoint on that front as well. So revenue was up 41%. That was pretty much entirely from growth in international retail of 60%. Uh, EBITDA margin went from negative 9% to negative 2%, uh, and the management team stated that that was mostly from improved margins in Trendial and Lazada, basically as those businesses have continued to scale. And uh, we don't have the exact numbers uh, for just Trendial specifically on the slide, but they did mention on the call that this was the first ever profitable quarter for Trendial, which is one of the large uh, Turkish e-commerce businesses. Next up, we have Local Services Group, uh, which was 6% of revenue in the quarter and is currently very loss-making. Uh, it includes two main Alibaba businesses. Firstly, Ulama, which is sort of a Uber Eats equivalent. And uh, secondly, AMAP, which I understand to be almost like a Google Maps equivalent, but uh, it is also sold to auto manufacturers and kind of comes in uh, Chinese vehicles as well. So uh, revenue for that segment was up 30%, mostly from uh, Ulama growth, and EBITDA margin was negative 14%, uh, an improvement from negative 25%. They said uh, mainly from reduced losses as the businesses continue to scale. Kainal Smart Logistics Network, uh, this is 10% of revenue in uh, the quarter and it's just reaching profitability. So uh, Kainal handles uh, a huge amount of both domestic and international logistics and sort of fulfillment services for Alibaba's various businesses. Uh, and revenue in the quarter was up 34%. They said primarily from higher revenue per order in international fulfillment services and domestic consumer services. Uh, adjusted EBITDA margin was positive 4%, so uh, profitable on that basis, up from a margin of negative 1% in the same quarter last year. Next up is Cloud. Uh, in the quarter, that was 11% of revenue and about 1% of the overall group's uh, profitability. Uh, and it's just recently breaking even. And I must say, it's been one of the more disappointing segments of Alibaba in recent years. 
Uh, for a long time, there was this great story around Alibaba Cloud. It was growing at 50% a year. It was still a small part of Alibaba's business, but it was you know growing in size really rapidly. Uh, but the growth kind of just ground to a halt. And uh, to a significant extent, that has continued uh, this quarter as well. So the cloud segment includes two main platforms, uh, of course, Alibaba Cloud, uh, their cloud service provider, but also Ding Talk, uh, sort of a Slack type equivalent uh, in China. Uh, revenue was up 4% year over year and adjusted EBITDA roughly doubled, but off a very small base. So uh, they're now at an EBITDA margin of about 1.5%. Digital media and entertainment, this is only 2% of revenue and uh, it's just reaching profitability. It includes Alibaba Pictures, uh, Yoku, which is sort of a Chinese YouTube, uh, and a few other smaller subsidiaries kind of in the mix as well. But revenue for the segment was up 36% year over year uh, and significant improvements in profitability or at least uh, in you know what was previously losing a lot of money. So EBITDA margin was a slim 1% but that is significantly up from negative 23% in the same quarter last year. They said the improvements in profitability were a mix of growth in online entertainment and also a strong recovery in uh, offline entertainment. And finally, what Alibaba are now just calling all other segments, which is actually quite a big chunk of the business. It was 19% of revenue in the quarter. Uh, this is sort of a new reporting group where everything that we haven't already covered kind of just seems to be lumped into. But uh, nonetheless, it includes uh, Alibaba Health and Fresh Shippo, which were previously in the China commerce segment and a range of other much smaller subsidiaries at Alibaba. So uh, in terms of that all other segments uh, kind of section, revenue was up 1%, uh, adjusted EBITDA margin was negative uh, 3%, which was a slight improvement from negative 5% in the same quarter last year. Uh, they said that was mainly due to improved results at Fresh Shippo, uh, Lingzhi Games and Fliggy, which is a travel services platform owned by Alibaba. So really consistent themes starting to come through in some of these segment results over the last few Alibaba quarters, uh, with the exception this quarter of the Taobao and Tmall group where their margin went from 44% uh, to 43%. Every other segment continued to improve their margins and become more profitable or at least less uh, loss making. And some of these segments had monster growth reported in the quarter, like uh, 30 or 40% uh, year over year growth in some cases. Okay, so lastly in this video, I wanna go through some of my personal highlights from the Q&A conference call with management. Now, this certainly won't cover every question that was asked in the conference call. Uh, I will leave a link down in the description if you wanna check out the full call for yourself. Uh, but these were some highlights that at least I took away from some of the questions from analysts. So first up, we had a question, can management share just how have broader consumption trends been tracking after a pretty strong June 18 shopping festival? First up, Exiting Group CEO uh, Daniel Zhang said, we've seen there is a gradual recovery underway in the Chinese economy and the Chinese government indeed has made many efforts to stimulate economic growth and drive consumption. We're looking at creating a virtuous investment cycle by investing in users and user growth, leading to merchant growth, driving higher revenues and then being able to further reinvest in growing users and user scale. So that's the positive cycle we'll be creating. And Trudy Dai, uh, Taobao and Timor CEO added, there certainly will be uncertainties ahead of us on this road, but I think faced with all these uncertainties and potential volatility, the greatest certainty we have is the need to continue to grow our user scale and our merchant scale. And we are very optimistic that as long as we can maintain our leadership in terms of user and merchant scale, that the mid to long term view of profitability and market share will be excellent. Continuing along the lines of sort of user growth, there was a question on looking at the excellent growth numbers you've reported for daily average users and also on VIP members, uh, double digit growth there. Uh, and if management could give us a little more detailed information on what lies behind those numbers. For example, in terms of new users, where are they coming from? How are they been acquired? Are they mostly from lower tier cities? 
and how do those new users compare with existing users in terms of their willingness to spend and their spending power. Uh, to which Trudy Dye said, we're starting to see payoff from our investments in this value for money battle, bringing to the market an increasing assortment of good items at good prices, developing that supply and attracting users with this proposition. And we are indeed seeing among paying users an increasing proportion of new users coming from lower tier cities or being young people or being older consumers. Another driver for sales this year has been the launch of new products, with 3 million new brands being launched by products on Tmall at this year's 618, driving significant sales in consumer electronics, appliances, apparel and other categories. Now there were quite a few questions through the call on uh, what Alibaba is doing in the artificial intelligence space and cloud computing. AI seems to be like a really major buzzword and buzz category of things for a company to talk about this year. So I've picked out a couple of highlights on uh, some of those cloud computing and AI topics and things. So question here, uh, summing a lot of this up, when do we expect to see cloud revenue growth uh, to further accelerate to a higher level given there appears to be some reluctancy for corporate spend on IT spending? And a related question on AI, given the fast adoption of AI offerings that we have launched recently, how should we look at the timeline and roadmap from a regulatory and also monetization standpoint? To which Daniel Zhang said, if you look at the cloud landscape in China, uh, the total cloud infrastructure as a percentage of IT infrastructure still uh, is lower. Uh, actually in a relatively low percentage as compared to US peers. Uh, we still see the huge potential first in this cloud infrastructure penetration. Companies want to use our AI capabilities to upgrade their services and in their own application, but they need a high computing, high performance computing power to support this operation, not only in today's training, but also in the influence services to be provided. I think right now we're taking some time to digest the impact from first the decline of the demand post pandemic. Uh, as we said in our script, for example, for many services relating to remote work, remote education, as well as online streaming, the demand obviously is lower post pandemic, which I think is a very important factor to drive our growth rate. And also we have had some impact from the decline in demand of one of our top customers. So I think we still need some time to digest this. And last sort of highlight question here from me was, uh, I'm wondering if you could talk to us about where you see things heading for the September quarter for both Tmall and Taobao in terms of daily active users and revenues. And then coming back to the June quarter, we saw a decline in margin year on year. So if you could please talk to us about margin in the June quarter, as well as on Tmall Supermarket and on Tmall and Taobao. Uh, to which Trudy Dye said, Timor Supermarket, uh, this is a first party business that we're operating ourselves and profit continues to improve. This year, we've invested very heavily in improving user experience on Timor Supermarket as part of that rolling out half day delivery services in 20 cities across China. And in those cities with half day delivery, we're seeing very, very significant improvements in growth and user scale orders and user satisfaction. E-commerce in general as a kind of commerce or business is affected by a variety of different factors of course including the macroeconomic environment and competition. So rather than focusing on short term competitive dynamics and growth numbers we're much more preoccupied with ensuring the long term development. So there you have it, yet another quarter of improved profitability at Alibaba, and this time with quite a bit of growth thrown into the mix as well. Uh, they still continue to produce a lot of cash. Uh, by my maths, $27 billion of free cash flow has been produced by Alibaba in the last 12 months. Uh, that's against a $240 billion market cap, and even less if you kind of back out the big cash pile that Alibaba have uh, sitting around. And a lot of that cash has simply been allocated to buying back shares and retiring shares and shrinking the share count and increasing the ownership for ongoing uh, shareholders in the business. Of course, Alibaba issues shares through stock-based compensation, and that's somewhat of an offsetting factor. But nonetheless, they're generating a lot of money, and they continue to shrink the share count. So let me know down in the comments below what you thought of that latest quarter from Alibaba. If you're interested in a two-week free trial of Seeking Alpha, check out the first link in the description as well. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.